Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to collect signatures directly in your Microsoft Access forms using the ink picture control. Now, to be clear, I'm talking about having someone actually sign a form in your database. I'm not talking about digital signatures or digitally signing your database. That's a whole separate video. But if you want to collect customer signatures inside your database, this video is for you. Today's question comes from Ralph in Reno, Nevada, one of my Platinum members. Ralph says, is there a way to capture customer signatures directly into my Access database like the way that the post office does with their tablets when they drop off a package that requires a signature? My field agents already have Windows-based tablets that run our Access database, so I'm wondering if this is something that is easily done or not. Yes, Ralph, there is an ActiveX control called Ink Picture, which I'll show you in just a minute. And with that and a couple of lines of code, you can save that signature. And as I noted on the cover slide, this is a developer level tech help video, so you need to know a little bit of VBA in order to follow along. If you've never done any VBA programming before, go watch this video. It's free, it's on my website, it's on my YouTube channel. It'll teach you everything you know, need to know to get started in about 20 minutes. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help Free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to. And I'm just going to use my single F form that I've got here. It's a simple little single form. I'm going to, let's rename it first. Right click rename. Let's call this my signature F. And I'll open this guy up and go to design view. And I'm just going to take these controls right off of here. And we're going to put an ActiveX control on this guy. Now, what is an ActiveX control? An ActiveX control is a control that is not itself part of Access. And you can find them by clicking on this little guy to open up the toolbox, and you'll see ActiveX controls right here. Now, generally, I recommend against using ActiveX controls unless everyone that's going to use this database has the exact same version of Microsoft Office and the exact same version of Windows, preferably but at least the same version of Office. If you're making a database to distribute to a bunch of other people in a bunch of different places, then I, have, I try to avoid ActiveX controls. But if this is for you and your employees to use and everyone's got the same hardware and software set up, same version of Office, you should be okay. Especially with this control, because you're going to come down here and you're going to find the Microsoft Ink Picture Control. If it says Microsoft in the front, it's generally safe. It comes with Office. There's stuff for Outlook in here. There's stuff for kinds of other things in here but there's also stuff that might be installed by different software providers based on what you've got on your computer so try to stick with the Microsoft stuff if you can I've done some videos on some of these other controls in previous videos like the progress bar for example and some of these are okay so let's pick the ink picture control hit okay and there we get a pink a pink <laughs> we have a picture box right there on our form okay we're going to resize this guy to look like a signature block, something like that. All right. And let's open up the properties for it. Right click, go to properties. And it's called Ink Picture 4. I'm going to rename that to just signature. Okay, that's my signature block. And let's resize this like this. Leave a little room down here for a button. Save it. Let's close it. And open it up and see what you got. There you go. And as you notice, if you move your mouse over, you get this little pointer here. And you can draw like this, right? Just like you're signing something. And if you got a tablet that's touch sensitive, you could use your pen or your finger. Okay. Uh, a couple little modifications. I'm going to turn off these navigation buttons and the record selectors. Let's close this. Open it back up in design view. Open up the properties for the form. Let's turn off the record selectors, navigation buttons, turn off the scroll bars, and uh, that's good enough for now. All right, close it, save changes, yes, open it back up again. All right, that looks cool. Slide it where you want it. Okay, and you can draw your little signature in there. Now, drawing in the box is no big deal, but we're going to need some VBA source code to save that drawing, that ink, as a file on our drive. Now it's not super hard. Let's go back into the design design view here. Where do we go? Design view. There it is. Okay, let's drop a button down here. So come up here, find the command button, drop it down there. 
cancel the wizard. Change this so it says save signature. Okay, and then we're gonna open up this guy's properties and we're gonna make this the save signature button. Right click, build event, that'll open up your VBA code editor. There we go. Now there's not a lot of code involved. I've tried to simplify this as much as possible. So there's a lot of other things that you can add to it and I'm gonna add a bunch more stuff in the extended cut, like some error handling and some ways to deal with different file names and stuff. But this is the minimal amount of code you need to get this to work. All right, first we need a variable. It's going to be a byte array to store the actual picture in, in memory. So we can save it. A byte array is basically an array of bytes. Don't worry about what that is. It's just basically a block of memory where we're gonna save all of the different pixels in the image. So we're going to dim BA and then open close parentheses that makes it an array as byte. That's an array of bytes, okay? Okay, here's the next line. I'm just gonna paste it in for my clipboard. All right, BA, our byte array, is gonna be equal to signature.object.inc.save, and then in parentheses, two. What does that mean? Well, that tells the signature block object to save the data in it in the BA byte array, and the two there means it wants to save it as a GIF, the GIF file format. Yeah, there are some other options. I'm not gonna cover them in this video. Trust me, just use two, use a GIF. Okay, next line. Open, and then your file name. Where do you wanna save this file to? I'm gonna save it as G, colon backslash my drive, backslash signature dot GIF. For binary as number one, that's gonna open up a binary file using file handle number one, and save that data from the byte array which is the data from the signature block to that file right there. Okay, that opens the file. The next line, put number one comma comma BA actually puts the data from the byte array in the file and then close number one, we're all done with that file. And that's it, that's the minimal amount of code you need to get this thing to work, all right? All right, so close this, let's close it, save it, whatever. Open it back up again. I'm gonna scroll my name in here, draw with the mouse the best I can, and then hit save signature. Okay, close that down. And now I'll go check my drive, and there in my My Drive folder is my signature.gif. There it is. See that? And that's it, that's the minimal amount of code you need to get this to work. But of course, that minimal amount of code doesn't really do a whole lot aside from collect the signature and save it as a file. You wanna do more stuff with it inside your database, right? For example, you might wanna go into a customer's orders and then down here on the bottom of their order form, click on get signature, have this guy pop up, have them sign it, save it, and then it saves that in the database, All right? See that? Or you go to somebody else, let's go to, uh, to Jean-Luc Picard, go to one of his orders, get signature, right? JLP, save it, there it is. Print out his invoice. His signature is right on his invoice, see that? Okay. That's a lot more useful. And I will show you how to do all of that in the extended cut for members. We will save those collected signature files with a special file name based on the order ID, so we know which signature file belongs to which order ID. We'll display that signature on the order form and on the invoice. We'll also make a clear button so you can clear it or delete it. That's all covered in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos and gold members can download these databases. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more.
YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are gonna keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.